Hi, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This week's tutorial is how I set up the M1X for birds in flight photography. Now, if you haven't watched the previous tutorial I did on my general setup for the M1X, you need to watch that first because this builds on that. So I'm using those settings plus these new ones. If you want to learn more about bird photography and create better bird images, hit the subscribe button and then click the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. So my last tutorial, one of the things that I said in there was that I used high sequential mode and that's like 15 frames a second or something like that. I don't use that anymore. I use low sequential and I used the low sequential. It's 10 frames per second, so it's still pretty fast. But the reason I use that is the autofocus system will focus on each picture before you're taking it. If you use the high sequential, autofocus works on the first picture, then it takes the sequence. And so if your subject moves, it just doesn't work. So that's a correction from that other video, but watch that one because it's got a lot of other good information in it. So currently I'm using one autofocus point. I think this works better. I'm experimenting with some other ways to use the Olympus autofocus system, but right now I'm using one and I'm tracking the birds. I'm getting the one autofocus point right on the head of the bird, but with some practice, it's easy to do that. And the other thing I do for birds in flight photography is I set my ISO to 400 to 640, depending on how much light I need to get a fast shutter speed. Remember, bigger birds fly slower and you can use a slower shutter speed on them and a lower ISO. Smaller birds fly faster, they need a higher shutter speed, you're probably gonna to need to bump your ISO up some. One of the things that you need to know for birds in flight photography is how to cycle through the various autofocus selection modes, single point, single target, small target, five target group, nine target group, all the way up to, up to all target points. And you do that by pressing the joystick or the multi-controller on the back of the camera and then using the front dial, and so that's your index finger. You can press the multi-selector and then scroll through and then you can get the focus points that you want. So maybe you're on a portrait and you've got a single point and you want to um, expand the number of focus points available so you can get a small erratic flying bird, then you'll be able to do this without taking your eye off the camera, which is going to help you out. Now, the next change that I do on the super control panel, I set the image stabilization to S, IS2, so the IS image stabilization works on vertical movement and not on horizontal movement. Because if I'm moving the camera left to right or right to left, blurring the background is good when you're doing birds in flight because then you've got that added sense of motion because the background is blurry in it. Okay, so the first change we're gonna make on the camera system is we're gonna go down to the custom menu or the gear icon. So we're gonna go into A1 and we're gonna go down to the AF scanner. We wanna be in mode three. In mode three, the autofocus system will keep trying to autofocus on your subject and that's what we want to happen. And then the next change is we wanna go down to case sensitivity. Now I've put this on plus two because I want it to be as sensitive as possible. I want it to find the subject and track the subject and so I'm gonna have this on plus two. And then we're gonna go down to, to C1, and we're gonna go into Continuous Focus Release Priority. And we're going to turn this off. We want it to be off because we want the emphasis to be on focus acquisition rather than shutter release. If we turn this on, the priority will be for shutters, and you can take a picture when the bird's still blurry. I want the focus to be on focus acquisition so the bird is sharp, and then we take the picture. So those are the changes that I'm currently using and I'm getting some good results. If you want to learn more about bird photography, pick up a copy of my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography. It's available on Amazon as a Kindle and a trade paperback. You can also order a copy at my website, timboyerphotography.com, and I will send you a signed copy that way. Remember to subscribe. It's a great way to continue learning about bird photography. I put out a tutorial just about every week and uh, click that bell icon when you subscribe so you'll get notification of each tutorial as it's posted. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this week. I will see you later. Bye.